The next example says classify the given function as polynomial, rational, or root, and then find the domain. Write the domain in interval notation. So this is the same directions as the last example. And this time we have h of x equals x squared, over, x squared plus 8 over x squared minus 3x minus 4. So first we want to classify it. We've got our three types, root, polynomial, and rational. So root function, those are going to have radicals in them, square roots, cube roots, and, and so forth. Polynomial function, these are the ones with no fractions, no radicals. You're going to have just variables to whole number powers. And then you have the last category, rational functions. Those are going to have variables in the denominator. So you can see that this example does have variables in the denominator. So I'm going to categorize this as a rational function. And then we want to find the domain of this rational function. So with rational functions, because they have variables in the denominator, we're concerned with the denominator equaling zero. If you have the denominator of a fraction equaling zero, this is something that is undefined. So our strategy for finding the domain is to set the denominator equal to zero. So we're going to take that denominator of x squared minus 3x minus 4. We're going to set that equal to zero. So we're trying to find when the denominator is equal to zero so we can find out where the function is undefined. So this is a, a quadratic equation which I can solve by factoring. We factor. The numbers that go here and here need to multiply to be x squared, so that's going to be x and x. The numbers that go here and here need to multiply to be negative 4. So we have a couple choices. Factors of 4 are 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. But I'm going to use 1 and 4 because that's going to help me get that middle number of 3. So if I use a negative 4, and a positive 1, that's going to give me the right factorization. If you're not so confident on factoring, make sure you check to make sure that you factored it right. So if I multiply this factorization out on the side, that would give me x squared minus 4x plus x minus 4. And if I combine like terms in the middle, I can see that I've chosen the correct factorization. Once you've got it factored, then you're going to set each factor equal to zero. That's using the zero product property. And if I subtract one on both sides, I'm going to get x equals negative one. Add four on both sides, I get x equals four. So these two values are going to cause the denominator to equal zero. So they have to be excluded from the domain. So what I'm doing is I'm going to start off with assuming that the domain is all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. But I figured out these values that I need to exclude. So I'm going to exclude negative 1 and I'm going to exclude 4. So let me write that out here. I'm putting an open circle to say that I'm not counting those values, but we are going to include all of the other values that are on the number line. Drawing this picture is going to help me write the interval notation. So I'm going to write uh, each interval in interval notation. So this first one here starts at negative infinity, and goes to negative 1. You'll notice I've used parentheses uh, next to the infinity. Infinity always gets parentheses next to it. And next to the 1, sorry, negative 1, we use those parentheses to indicate that negative 1 is not part of the set. We use brackets when something is part of the set. So then I write the next interval, the next interval, goes from negative 1 to 4, 
negative 1 is the lower bound, 4 is the upper bound. We're going to use parentheses on both of those because they're not part of the set. And then from 4 to infinity is the last interval. So that gives us our interval notation. And that is the domain of our function h of x.